Sonic Universe Issue 17 We started with Tails, Bunny, and Antoine going over the ocean together in tiny submarines, with Antoine being scared and denying it as Tails jokes he can put down the windshield if he's that worried. I'm glad they remember that Antoine's supposed to be a coward, but I don't see why he'd be afraid here at all. Tails apologizes that there isn't much room, saying that the Sea Fox was only a one-seater, and Bunny thanks him for taking them all the way to his private island for their long overdue honeymoon. Tails has a private island? Since when? When did he find this island and arbitrarily claim it as his own? I know that's how it was in the games, or at least one translation of Tails Adventure anyways, but it still makes no sense. You'd think he'd be too busy being a freedom fighter. When they reach Coco Island, Tails is confused because there's a third, smaller island around it. So either it was created by naturally occurring chaos energy, or more likely, it's another artificial island. Tails then explains that he's the one who made the map himself, and there's no way he could miss the whole island. But then he just shrugs it off instead of getting suspicious that the Fiona robot island situation was repeating itself like I expect of him. He just assumes that he was too focused on Coco Island itself, and stops questioning it as they go to the beach. Then we see the heroes being spied on by monitors, with monitors, with villains, with the villains panicking that nobody's supposed to know about this place. How can an island be that unknown? It's weird since in real life, the entire world is completely mapped out. There's no islands that we missed. All because we have satellites to do that. But Mobius has satellites too. I guess it doesn't have widespread internet access so people can't find out about the island that easily. The grunts decide not to warn the Battle Lord about this because he'll get really mad. This is why a villain getting mad at bad news is being stupid. Eventually, he'll stop getting bad news. The grunt, in the same breath as they decided not to warn their boss about something, suddenly shows obedience by saying that he'll be executed if he lobs the missiles without being told to. That's stupid though, shouldn't they be rewarded for taking care of the enemy like that? He also get plucked for humiliation's sake. A bird guy with seniority over them says that they'll simply observe the vacationing heroes. Maybe he doesn't want to risk wasting missiles. Tails reassures Bunny that he won't be lonely by himself because he's got plenty of projects to work on in his workshop that's apparently already set up on this island we've never seen him on before, that we've been given no indication he's had the free time to go here and set up a workshop on until now, with fighting major villains all the time. He innocently asks if the couple will be bored when he leaves, and Antoine mangles English again. It's ironic that he seems to have gotten worse at English over the years because he didn't make nearly as many mistakes before Aunt Flynn showed up. It's good that he does that to make his dialogue interesting and make me actually look forward to it for once, but having him be like this later, not earlier, is confusing, and we're just expected to assume he's always been making these mistakes so much and that most of them have just been off-screen. Antoine then lampshades that Tails was naive enough to not get that the couple won't be bored, since they could just make out all day if they want to. Tails explains to the audience through reflection that he first came across the island when he was making his way home from Down Under for the first time. Okay, so the writer tries to fill in a little bit of the space between the end of the Tails miniseries and Tails going home, but he still didn't take the opportunity to fix the actual problem, which was that we never saw Tails getting home from that and his friends congratulating him. His whole motivation was to earn his friends' his respect by accomplishing stuff independently, and we never got to actually see the moment where he earned it. Anyways, Tails reveals that during the time where he thought Sonic had died, he took a lot of time off here, and getting to know the island and building his workshop was the only thing getting him through that dark time because it focused his mind on something else. I mean, it was either that or crying non-stop around his friends. In this case, he was better off being productive than seeking out comfort, I guess. But I like this, this is probably how Tails would react to something really eating at him. He distracts himself with getting busy to avoid thinking about it and expressing his feelings properly. It's interesting, he's not that different from Sally. Tails thinks about how it used to be his own secret because he didn't think he'd be allowed to keep the island, and his friends worried about him being off on his own so much back then. Well, no wonder he didn't tell them where you were! He's lucky they weren't constantly assuming he'd gotten kidnapped. You'd think they would have questioned him the minute he went missing the first time. Especially because of Tails' miniseries where he went missing for days. Tails is seen flying through the monitor, causing some battle birds to freak out over it, and one to conclude that the only Mobians allowed to fly are birds. It's logical that this happens, but this really should happen a lot more often instead of people randomly just accepting it like there's a weirdness sensor.
One of the Birdmobians says that he'll meet with the Battle Lord, and we see what feels to me like a waste of comic space, as we see a boringly dialogueless montage of Antoine Bunny scuba diving and setting up camp, and then Tails petting, pe petting Teapup, who came out complete nowhere. Was he always here? Looking depressed, Antoine asks Bunny at night if she ever worries that they got married too early. Bunny jokes around about how socially awkward Antoine was acting by saying that to his wife. He says he's on a honeymoon, no less. After Bunny justifies their early marriage as them getting married quickly just in case in their dangerous lives, Antoine says with a smile that sometimes he worries that Bunny thinks they rushed into things. Bunny reassures him that they've just had to grow up fast, and she's okay with it. Tails gets woken up by an explosion, gets panicked, seeming to know what's going on, and decides that he has to hurry and find Bunny and Antoine, who are running from the fire determined to get the Tails and leave the island. After getting surrounded by Battlebirds, Antoine says that's unfortunate for them and attacks one of them, stealing their weapon. Bunny uses a force field from her cybernetics to shield herself from some lasers, from Mecha that, thanks to the black and white eyes of the bird there, it looks like he's a cyborg. Bunny damages the Mecha using her extendable arm, and Tails compliments Teep up on flying, implying they just built him recently, explaining why he's on the island. Tails gets ambushed by some Battlebirds, calling him a freak, and after he wastes some comic space reflecting on how weak and pathetic he was when he was younger, he flies around with a smirk to camp his enemies, one of which says that he's too fast. This fast flying was foreshadowed by Tails flying around as fast as Sonic in that he eats a smart fruit story. Tails laughs that their aim is terrible as the Mechas shoot each other with lasers, then after he sees Speedy fly right past him, he wants to see who the better flyer is and immediately gets attacked again. We then cut away from him, implying that he was kidnapped and not allowed to be that badass, and see Antoine getting snuck up on by a giant mecha that really should have been loud enough to alert him to its attention, but fortunately Bunny defends him. Antoine complains that he's missing his sword, and Bunny complains that she's getting tired. Unfortunately, when another mecha comes up behind them, Bunny tries to shoot at it, and they just get knocked unconscious by an extended fist, leaving them passed out with fire around them. Well, that was over lazy. Bunny and Antoine get kidnapped just like that, while the bird grunts once again decide not to call up their boss, this time because he's got his hands full. Tails has questions about who they are and why they're being jerks are ignored, and he's sent out of the sky, and Speedy ends the story calling him a freak. He just barely doesn't look like Bean. It's a good thing he's in that getup. This issue is by Ian Flynn. Well, it's a little late to do a Tails Adventure adaptation, but at least they're trying now. It's refreshing to see some villains in the comic we haven't already dealt with. The problem with this story to me is that Bunny and Antoine got knocked out way too easily after all the fighting they did earlier, tired or not. Other than that, it was nice of Tails to try to give his friends a honeymoon, late or not. I'm glad the vacation was explained as being that to have it feel justified. Tails having his own private island comes out of complete nowhere though, it's only there because it was in the manual of a game.